Hi, I'm Craig Bell. And this is John Perkins. We want to welcome back Brother Jerry Ridge. Thank you, Brother John. Craig. Part two of the Great Commission. I just wanted to continue to say today, I've thought a lot about this work, uh, of the great work of the Lord to try to reach others. When we're the closest to God, when we're very near to God, that's when he's so real in our hearts that the love of God within us makes us have a de- great desire to go unto others, to share what we have. It's the greatest thing we've ever known, and we want to share that with everybody. And I thought of the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament. Amen. When he uh, told us his experience with God, uh, when he talked about it when it, in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord. And he goes on with that testimony. You can read it in the early chapters there. But he got so close to God, and, and God talked about, the scriptures talked about how God took a live coal from the altar and purged his lips. And then Isaiah heard the Lord saying, the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah cried out, Lord, here am I, send me. So he had that great burning desire to go as he got close to God. Yes. And the the heart of God in that statement, you know, who shall go for us? God's looking for just willing people, isn't he, that would step out with that. The Bible said if there first be a willing mind, it's accepted of a man that that he hath and not that he hath not. Too many times we think, oh, I'm not equipped to go and do all of this. But all we need is a real experience with God and a testimony to share, and God can use us. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus went and he said, I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. Then he turned around and they was amazed. They said, when did we feed you when you was hungry? When did we visit you in prison? When when was you sick that we came and visit you? And they said, if you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. And then he turned around and said, I was hungry and you did not come and see me. I was in prison. You didn't visit me. They said, when? When when was you these things? When was you naked and we didn't close you? And he said, if you didn't do it to the least of these, my brother, you didn't do it to me. That's right. One other thing I wanted to share quickly with you all today is uh, we all remember when Jesus sent his disciples out and told them to go throughout the land of Israel and preach in all the cities and heal the sick, preach the gospel, cast out evil spirits, and, and do this great work of God. And there were 70 of them. And he sent them out two by two. So that was 35 pairs. And I've thought so many times if we had 70 people show up for church to go out on visitation as pastors, how thrilled we would be. (laughs) But Jesus turned as he watched those go away. He told them as they walked away, he said, remember, without me, you can do nothing at all. They needed him. But as they walked away, he said, pray the Lord of the harvest, because the harvest is great and the labors are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth more labors. And so this is uh, this is the mindset that we should have today, that we all need to try to do more as much as we can. You know, Brother Jerry, I think about what Jesus said there. Because so many people say, well, the problem today is people's hearts are hardened. Nobody's interested. People, you know, it's too hard to get people into church these days, everybody says. But Jesus said the problem wasn't with the harvest. The problem was with lack of laborers. That's right. That's right. And you know, if God is dealing with us to go somewhere, he's already working on the other end. He's already preparing their hearts to receive what we're going to bring to them. There's a story in the Bible, Brother Jerry, with the man that made the great supper for all of his friends and his family. And they, with one after another, made excuse why they couldn't come. He said, go into the hedges and the highways right. and bring them in. Right. Bring the blind, the, the withered, the halt. Bring them in that my house may be full. And you, brethren, know for sure that the greatest experience since that you got saved was when you led someone else Amen. or helped someone else. Saw them, saw them come to Christ. Amen. The Bible talked about how blessed are the soul winners, and that's what we need to be about. Amen. I don't know about you, brothers, but I think people are hungry right now. With COVID, with everything that's happened in our country, People are hungry for something. They, they know they're lacking something in their lives. It's a great time to witness to people, to be a light, to show hope when people have no hope, to show the love of Jesus when there's so much hate in this world. What better time to let our light shine? And you know, Brother Craig, I've noticed this, that uh, we fear a lot of times rejection, that we'll go and people will reject us. But over the, the years of, of our ministry, oh, there have been very, very few times that people have rejected us. They receive the Word of God. I think you're exactly right. They're hungering and thirsting for the Word of God. Brother Jerry, we thank you again for being with us again this week. Our time has flown by, but you're so insightful, and we really appreciate you spending time with us in these five minutes. God bless you, brethren. Continue this great work that you all are doing. 